Hello, Dr. G here from naturalfoodsdiet.org. I've talked before about the microbiome that inhabits our gut with 100 trillion cells and up to 250 different species. The DNA contained in the microbiome is at least 100 times greater than our own DNA. There are many studies out there that show that obese people tend to have gut flora changes compared to lean people. In fact, they did a study where they took the flora from a fat person and they transplanted it into a tiny little mouse. And after a period of time, that mouse wasn't so tiny anymore. It became fat. Studies have also shown that obese people often have lower species diversity in their gut. Today, I'd like to talk about a couple of factors that might alter species diversity, which may lead us down the path to fatness. We all know that obesity is closely related to type 2 diabetes. A recent case control study showed that antibiotic use led to a 53% increase in diabetes reported in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism in 2015. It's obvious that antibiotics severely alter our gut flora, and we can even wipe out species that should be there. Another study I can mention of over a million people reported in the European Journal of Endocrinology in 2015 showed a similar 37% increase in diabetes with increased antibiotic exposure. Now I know I personally have been getting much better in my medical practice of not giving antibiotics for every cold, sinus infection, ear infection, especially when there's trials that compare using an antibiotic versus placebo for these very conditions. And the results are there's no significant difference between taking antibiotics or not taking them. Now you say, well, I don't take any antibiotics. Well, if you're a meat eater and you don't eat organic meat, studies show you'll still get a healthy dose of antibiotics. And that's because the factory farm feeds the animals antibiotics. And you say, well, why would they do that? Because the animals get fat just like we do. And when they get fat, they gain weight faster. And because the factory farm is all about profits and meat is sold by the pound, you can see where factory, farmed, factory farms are going to use antibiotics like crazy, and they do. So the evidence points to antibiotics being a major contributor to obesity and diabetes. Now I'd like to talk about a dietary practice that tends to reduce the species diversity of our microflora in our gut, and that's eating sugar, refined starch, and unfortunately fruit, which has sugar in it. There's a molecule that's made in our liver, muscles, and intestine that is increased when we run out of food, and it stimulates the burning of fat to keep us going while the food is low. This is called fasting-induced adipose factor, or FIA. Studies show that when you eat a lot of refined sugar and refined starch, the bacteria in the gut decrease the production of FIA, and you get fat. Then the fat cell produces more leptin. Now leptin should, in an ideal situation, turn off our hunger. But most of us have inflamed brains, which don't listen to leptin. That's called leptin resistance. And so we just get fatter and fatter, or we can't lose the weight that we have. In this situation, it would help to eat a higher fat diet. And in that way, you starve the gut bacteria, and they, in turn, produce more FIOF which then causes us to burn fat and lose weight. So those little critters inside us can help us. Now there's another factor that can alter the gut flora that isn't talked about. There's many studies that show that UV light kills bacteria. But what most people don't know, including doctors, is that the enterocytes that line our gut emit ultraviolet light. And studies show that the UV light given off by the cells in our gut are increased when we're in poor health, like when we have increased inflammation in our body. So even if you don't take any antibiotics, you still might be at risk for having 
low gut bacterial diversity because you live in an inflammatory environment. So that means if you want to get to the root cause of your problem, you've got to get to the root cause of inflammation. Now diet here plays a role, but I believe there's an equal and possibly even more important role of environmental factors, and especially factors that have been present since we evolved and then new things entering in that disturb them. And that's things like the crazy increase in electromagnetic field exposure in our high-tech life. Studies show that non-native EMF causes inflammation even at low doses. Now, another important cause of obesity or something that's connected to obesity is disturbance of our circadian rhythm, which is caused by artificial light, especially at night. And then if you add in that most people are stressed out and we're never grounded, we're always wearing tennis shoes and on carpets, and we never get any electrons from Mother Earth, we then get the perfect storm, and that is the worldwide obesity epidemic. Now there's some short-term ways to increase your gut diversity. Now when a person gets their gut biome wiped out by antibiotics, commonly they'll get an infection by a bacterium named Clostridium difficile. This causes diarrhea. Clostridium is often resistant to many common antibiotics. So it's a nasty bug that can kill you because none of the antibiotics work. Nowadays, they give people a fecal implant when they have the drug-resistant C. difficile. And this treatment has been life-saving for some people. Now, I personally am not going to volunteer as a donor, but if you're really bad off, this is an option that works for the diarrhea and it may work for obesity. Now, there's probiotics out there. They're sold by the supplement companies. Now, some of these supposedly have been tested, but most of the studies done using probiotics, which find a benefit, use much higher doses that are available from the supplement company products. There are foods with living organisms like fermented foods, yogurt, kefir, kimchi, sauerkraut, and these can be used. Soil organisms also play a role. So if you have a garden, don't wash off all the dirt. Leave a little bit of trace dirt on there, eat the vegetables raw, and you'll get some of these beneficial soil organisms. Now, I don't rec recommend doing that with commercially raised produce. Prebiotics is a term for feeding your flora, and we commonly think of fiber. Fiber from asparagus, artichoke, garlic, and root vegetables are particularly good. Many of the grains, especially wheat, are inflammatory. So their fiber should be avoided if you have gut problems or if you're obese. So I want you to stop and think right now. Stop and think. Think about the trillions of lives that depend on you. And they also depend on what you expose yourself to. And in turn, you'll expose them to it. They also depend on what you eat. So you got to think. Don't be so self-centered. Think of your bacteria. Be nice to your bacteria. If you're nice to your bacteria, they might make fiaf to lean you out. This is Dr. G. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to our channel.